Um, yes, welcome, guys. Today is we have a question here that is from the WAS exams 2018 private, but it came in that of the for the mathematics. So we have to understand that the physics part of for the mathematics also can be used to explain what we need in motion, in vectors, and in other parts. So here is the question. First, we'll read the question in its entirety, and then after reading the question, we will guide you through how this question is answered. It says a body of mass, sorry, a body moving, no mass, a body moving at 20. 20 here is the initial velocity. Accelerates uniformly at two and a half meters per second square. So that's the acceleration. So the final velocity is not given for four seconds, the time. It continues with the speed reach for eight seconds. That's the second interval of this. So there are two times. Before coming to rest in T seconds, so the third time is not given, but we are told T seconds. It says, um, with a uniform retardation, with a uniform what? A retardation. So it decelerates. If the ratio of acceleration to retardation is 3 is to 4. So this is in the form of a ratio. Ratio of acceleration to retardation is 3 is to 4. A. Draw the velocity time graph of the journey. B. Calculate the time as the body retardates to rest. C. Calculate the total distance traveled. So, we start by drawing our velocity time graph. Remember, here we have a vertical V and a horizontal t. So vertical we have velocity in meters per second and horizontal we have time in seconds. Now just to remind you basically this journey let's say is in intervals of 10, 20, 30, 40 and this goes. So we're just trying to check the velocity in that interval. And here is zero. And we have the time in the interval. We have, let's say, four, eight, we have uh, 12, we have 16, and we don't know. So but let's maintain the timing between that because we have an unknown time in that interval. So if we look at this, the velocity is starting at 20. That's the starting velocity. Because on the start, the question says u is 20 meters per second. That is the initial velocity. Huh? And we have the time there as 4 seconds. Yes, the time is 4 seconds. And the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared. By the definition of acceleration, acceleration is change in velocity with respect to time. So if we know the final, then we're going to say the final velocity will be u because change in means v minus u. Take note, delta means final velocity minus initial velocity. So it takes us back to the first equation of motion. v equals to u plus a t. We calculate that. What is u? u is 20 plus a. A is two and a half and T is four. Already look at this. Four times two and a half will give us ten. And ten plus twenty is going to be thirty meters per second. So now we have our final velocity. So within the first four seconds, within the first four seconds, the car has traveled to thirty. So, it has traveled to 30 within the first 4 seconds. So, when you look at that, it has traveled to 30 within the first 4 seconds. Then what happens? It maintains that velocity for how many seconds? 8. So, this interval here was 4 seconds. And then it maintains that velocity for 8 seconds. This interval is 8 seconds. But when you add 8 onto 4, that is going to give you 12, because 8 plus 4 is 12. 
Now after that what happened is the car retarded. Retardation occurs and the car was brought to rest. Brought to rest in t seconds. So here this interval now is t. We don't know what that is. So we call it t seconds. That is what happens during the retardation. That's one important thing. So the first part the question is expecting you to have a level of these stuffs. That is the time and then the velocity. Initial and final. Because that is what happens in the VT graph. We have to remember the slope represents the acceleration, whilst the area represents the distance traveled or the distance covered. Now we go back to the question. It says calculate the time as the body returns to rest. Before we know the time as the body returns to rest, we are given something. Acceleration is to retardation. What does that mean? It says that the ratio of acceleration to retardation is 3 is to 4. 3 is to 4. That is the ratio. Meaning acceleration over retardation is equal to 3 over 4. Remember, one thing about ratios is we can express them into fractions. And when we express this into a fraction, we have acceleration over retardation is equal to 3 over 4. Now that being the case, what we look at is if this is 3 over 4 now, what we are going to do is, okay, 3 over 4, we compare. What was the acceleration in the beginning? The acceleration is 2.5, 2.5 meters per second. So 2.5 is to an unknown. So it's simple. We can call it X, we can call it R, we can call it E. But it's simple in terms, it just means the retardation. By extension, we call it an unknown X. So we're going to have 3x will be equal to 4 times 2.5. Why 4? Because of that ratio on 2.5. Then we divide both sides by 3. And when we divide both sides by 3, you come to realize that 4 times 2.5 is 10. And 10 divided by 3 is going to be our retardation. Therefore, the retardation is 10 over 3 meters per second squared. Which, of course, by approximation can give you 3.333333. But I will leave it to that as our retardation. Because we need this retardation to know the time. Now let's go back. The question then says, we find the time. Remember, A was to draw the VT graph. Now B, we need this to solve B, but B continuation. Now, during that interval of the retardation, we realize that this is a triangle. We know that delta V is equals to U, is equals to AT. Simple terms. That is, change in velocity is equal to acceleration times time. Now, when we look at this, the velocity is changing from 30 to 0. That's why it is retardation. It comes to rest. So, to find the retardation, the retardation is already given. The time, therefore, will be equal to delta v all over a and this a here represents the what the retardation you have to know it in that way now look at this delta v that is changing velocity 30 and 0 a positive interval there would be 30 divided by take note since this retardation is a negative and this 0 minus 30 is a negative so at the end of the day what happens is we have a positive time. So take note, you cannot have a negative time. So in that case, we would have divided by 10 over 3. So the exact reason why I said I wasn't going to remove that 10 over 3 is this. Now, simple math will give us something like that. 30 times 3 divided by 10. And this is just going to be 9 seconds. So we take note of that. Now you see, we got the time as 9 seconds here now what we don't know is 9 so 9 plus 12 so the total time for the journey now will be 9 plus 12 and that will be 21 seconds well you don't have to put this thing in the graph but this is going to show us what happens within that 21 seconds now the last part calculate the total distance remember to find the total distance, what we have to consider is what shape do we have? I am going to consider this as area 1 because it looks like a trapezium from this end. 
Then from there, I am going to consider this whole thing as area 2 for basics, and then this whole thing as area 3. But remember, as we always say, there is not a single way to calculate this. So area 1, to do that fast, is a trapezium. Remember, trapezium is half times. What are the parallel sides? The parallel sides are 0 to 20 and 0 to 30. So therefore, I will have 20 plus 30. And this 20 plus 30 here is the parallel sides multiplied by the height. When we throw the trapezium, multiplied by 4. So we do the maths. 2 can go into 4 two times. Then 20 plus 30 is 50. 50 times 2 is 100. So therefore, the area 1 is 100 meters. That is the distance traveled within the first four seconds. Then in the next eight seconds, that is what we represent as area 2. Area 2 is going to be uh, this height is 30 and the base is 8 so it's just a rectangle so we're going to have 8 times 30 and 8 times 30 will be 200 and what and 40 meters then we left with the third one the third one is like a rectangle somebody else can also choose a2 and a3 to be one but the third one is a rectangle a3 is a rectangle so that being the case it's a triangle, sorry, pardon me. So if that is a triangle, then we have 1 over 2 times the base. Uh-huh, we calculated that it was 9 multiplied by the height, which is 30. 30. So you see that? So this one here, this one here would cancel with that and it will reduce it into a 15. So now our target is to know 9 times what? 9 times 15. So we have to say 9 times 5 is 45. 5 carry 4. Take note, remember multiplication. 9 times 1 is 9. One 9 plus 4 is going to be 13. So therefore, A3 is 135. Finally, the total area, which is going to represent the distance, will be 100. Plus 240, of course, they're all in meters, plus 135. So we add, when we add them up, this is going to be a 5, and this is going to be 7, and this is going to be a 4. So we have 475 meters that represents the distance covered, and that is our letter C. So when we look at this, we have a question solved. And this is the last question. It's from the further marks, but we were able to put it into the physics. Because the physics aspect of further marks always comes in. It's, it's one of the areas, and we we'll thank you for going through that video. I hope that is helpful. I expect to see more videos online. Remember, the link, uh, um, we have it as just comes great power. That is how we're going to be putting in more and more videos that will shoot you. So thank you very much and do have a nice day.